Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I'm Katie Walsh. Before we are joined by our guests today, I wanted to let you know that the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization that relies entirely on donations to provide emergency assistance and free educational programs to SAG After artists. This conversation is made possible thanks to the generosity of our supporters. Over the past year, the foundation has given over $6.5 million in COVID relief to more than 7,000 performers. If you are a SAG after artist and need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for your support. Now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Vicki Creeps of Bergman Island. Mm -hmm. Hi, Vicki. Hi. Thank you so much for chatting with us today. I'm really excited to talk to you about your performance in this film and, and just get into all things Bergman Island. Um, I know this film shot in 2018, right? So it must feel like kind of a distant memory at this point, especially after the year and a half we've all had. Yes, um, especially it was actually shot over two years. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize so that. It, yeah, yeah, so we shot it, I think 2018 and 2000. 19 actually so which makes it even weirder like it's already been like such a strange journey you know to do do a movie over two years and then you have it was supposed to come out and then it was COVID and it never came out so like can the journey continued <laughs> yes yes you're still on the on the journey with with Bergman <laughs> Island um, but it must be kind of fun to, I don't know if you've watched it recently, but it must be kind of fun to kind of revisit that time because it's such a, it, it gives a little bit of wanderlust to the viewer to, to visit this island. And, and I felt like I was going on a vacation. I had dreams about Sweden all night because I watched it yesterday. Yeah, I think that's what's the nicest about the movie is that people really, especially after all this time stuck in your home, it really takes you on a journey, but it's the interesting thing is what Mia does. It's like a, it's a real journey and you enjoy the landscape and you fall into the landscape really. Mm -hmm. and, on the, and it's really also this internal journey of, you know, really going to the inside of like human emotions, but like in a very subtle way, you know, not, not like we're used to watch movies where it's like all dramatic. And then, you know, I mean, it's also dramatic, but it's a, uh, it's very subtle somehow, you know, but it's this like inside journey. Yeah, I I was thinking last night after the film ended, you know, I, I love watching her films. They're so effortless and they're such a joy to watch, but I almost feel like I don't get everything. There's so many layers, like it's like an iceberg. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but you know what I think? So... I watched all of her movies and I like her cinema, obviously, which is, you know, I, I, I was a fan of her work before we worked together. Um, but I do think that in this one, it becomes more real somehow. It becomes like so, like, as you say, usually it's this iceberg and it's very complex and you, you follow it, but you don't know. And, and some people, you know, might think it's even too complicated, maybe, you know, or too constructed. But in this case, it has become organic. Like she says, yeah. it feels like this movie goes back to the beginning and beyond, you know? It's like, it's finally really, I don't know, her somehow, but in an yeah. organic way, not in a like a construction way. Right, but I, I feel like that that organicness, that effortlessness just like makes it, you almost just like experience or absorb the film and, and I, f I also feel like your performance is a big part of that. There's such an ease to your performance. It feels like you there there must be some kind of sense of yourself that you're bringing to it. And I just yeah. wanted to ask you, you know, how do you prepare to play a character like Chris? Yeah. So it's very interesting because on one hand, you could think it's a movie I did not have to prepare because I am a mother. I have two children. I'm struggling with the same things, you know and more because I have two children and not only one. Uh, but it, what was actually complicated to do was that the one thing was that we had to shoot it in like two years. So one year I was shooting and I didn't know who was my husband. So I was running around the island, you know, keeping myself from imagining some kind of actor that I might think that maybe might you know, be my husband one day, but I had to fill the space somehow. 
So I did it by starting like this dialogue with the island almost. And I think you feel this in the movie. You know, you feel how Chris is, uh, when she's not with her husband, she's really almost like silently talking to the island or maybe the ghost of Berkman. You know, I, I could feel his ghost very strongly because I didn't have a husband in a way, you know. So, of course, this space was taken by Berkman in a way and, and the magic around Berkman or any kind of director who has left like this sort of work, you know, like, I mean, he has left something uh, big. And, and um, so any kind of director like this leaves a ghost behind, obviously. And if you are in a place where he used to live and you see his house and you see his fridge and his toaster and where he used to go to the toilet, you can really start to feel who this person might have been. So I was really in a very strong dialogue with him who is not there, my husband who is not there, and this strange island, which is beautiful and magical and a place of pilgrimage for so many people because, you know, the safari, Berkman safari really exists, you know? Mm -hmm. Like all these things really exist. It's a crazy place. It's really like, yeah, people go there um, to haunt, uh, I mean, to no, to chase the ghost of Berkman, which is haunting the place. So that was interesting, like, because you asked me about the performance, you know. I've never done anything like it, that I was acting with someone who's not there. Like, two people who were not there. That right. Super, you know? That's so, so interesting. Was, yeah, that, that was, uh, I can't say, I mean, it certainly wasn't easy, because at the beginning, I really thought I'd, I don't know how to do this, you know, I won't succeed. And what helped me was thinking of it like um, in terms of poetry. Like when we read poetry, we are very moved and we feel so many things, but we don't necessarily know or understand. We are not with the writer to ask, were you actually talking about love or are you actually talking, you know? But it's more that we feel what the person was trying to describe or maybe the writer was going through when they were writing the poem. And a poem is something that is like, in my opinion, it's almost like hovering in the air. You know, anyway, it was very interesting. <laughs> so you shoot for a year and, or not for a year, but you shoot one year and you're having this experience of doing this alone or acting with these ghosts, as you say, and then you come back the next year and here's your husband, it's Tim Roth. And how, how did that change for you um, and, and for the character as well and your performance? You, suddenly you have this person, this, you know, actor to interact with. Yeah, so the first part was already not easy, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but then kind of fun because I had Mia and we were talking about the script and it was very intense. It was really like French would say, un bibé. like it was filled of like us and us trying to search this story and kind of like happy that we're able to make the movie, although like not as it should be, but at least we are shooting, you know, it's like, uh. um, but then it was also nice because it could be in this place and it in fact kind of peaceful. And then came Tim Roth. <laughs> mm. You know, can you imagine, like, you, yeah. you, you fill the place with poetry and imagination and, and dreaming and, you know, and then there comes this man who, first of all, is like a real person, uh, a wonderful person, but of course, also like this American actor. I mean, he's not American, but we know him from Tarantino and, and right. all these have like filled him. Like, I'm filled with where I come from. He's filled with, with his experiences, right? And these two worlds meet. And then it's like, okay, but how are we going to make this work now? Because I have found my way on my own before, but now <laughs> I have to find a way with this guy. And he had to find a way with these people, you know, which wasn't easy for him too. So imagine being him, you know, you take your plane, you come from LA and then you're on this island. Right. <laughs> And there's nothing and everyone's like, we've been here already. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like sheep and people who've been there already. French <laughs> people who like the, the team, like the French um, technicians, they had cases like boxes of wine 
delivered to the island because in Sweden, you cannot drink alcohol after a certain time. I mean, you cannot buy it in a store. So the French, of course, were very <laughs> concerned about their wine. So they <laughs> That's amazing. Boxes of, of wine, you know. They're and like, they were, we've got the camera stuff. We've got the <laughs> microphones. We've got the wine. <laughs> so they we're good to go. Where they're going to live. They've done it one year before. You know, they know where they have to go. They know where to live. They have their wine. And he was like the only one arriving, you know, like, right. okay, uh, here I am. So, I mean, we should ask him to be uh, sure, but I'm sure that it was not easy for him either. So what we did then, what I remember doing consciously and him reacting like so nicely. I, I mean, I was kind of desperate. I was really like, what can I do now? Because the director was talking clearly a different language than Tim. You know what I mean? Um, and I was kind of in between. So what I started doing was I went to humor. Like humor is the language we all share and it's, it's international and it's the language of the heart also in a way, you know. And as you can imagine, like an English punk, you know, <laughs> from somewhere from London who then became like a, a, a movie star in like Tarantino movies and then me coming from a tiny country you know doesn't know what's going on and I do like this movie with the you know PTA and then here I am and so the only way that these people can really meet is of course with humor and we do share the same kind of humor so this is what you see in a movie between the two you know you see a mm -hmm. husband Life and, and you see the problems and you see how she needs to emancipate, get away. But you also see the com complicity, like the complice, like their, the connection. They're like companionship or their yeah. connection. Yeah, they're, they're companions, they're friends, they're, yes. you know, confidants. Yes, and I think you can really feel it in the film that, that the two people are very connected in the core, you know, of their marriage. And I think this resulted out of this humor thing mm -hmm. that was constantly going on. I mean, there was not five minutes of me and Tim being serious. I, I mean, yeah, for the scene, you know, but anything outside of it, he would just go, you're an idiot. And I would say, you're an idiot, you know, like, <laughs> go fuck yourself. I'm sorry. But, you know, it was really like this level of. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So you I see also what yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it is a way to bring someone in to connect with them. But I also it, I think it's interesting that, you know, he kind of felt like he's coming into this project and, you know, it it lends there's so many layers of of experience and life and storytelling in this film that it it, it all informs what's going on on screen, you know, coming yeah. to this festival, feeling like, oh, I have to figure out how to fit in or, you know, maybe there's yeah. a little bit of disconnect in the marriage and but still coming back to that core, it's like, it's all on screen, all of that. Yeah, that's what's beautiful about the movie. I think, I mean, she did write it in the beginning, but it, she says it herself, it became even more of what she wrote because of these problems, you know? So mm -hmm. you have a movie in the movie, but you also have the movie that was shot one year before, the movie that was shot one year after. You have us being from different countries. You have all these things that again are like, movies in movies in movies or layers under layers yeah. you know speaking of those layers i wanted to ask you how much you knew about the movie that chris makes that she's describing that we see like when did you see that or did you know who the actors were like I, i'm just curious like if you went through this process of describing this whole film that she's writing and then that she subsequently makes and then you go oh wow that's the movie i made <laughs> yeah yeah it was it important for me to know for myself what kind of movie she would make mm -hmm. let's say more like what kind of movie she's searching and that it's really difficult for her like mia always says it's difficult for her too like writing is like a process um how can she find her story? So it was to me important to have an idea of what this story might be or, you know. Um, but of course I wasn't there when they were shooting. Mm -hmm. I also didn't have an idea of what it eventually became. 
I didn't know it was Mia and Anders and we did meet not a lot, you know, like two times or something. And we bonded, you know, I could, when I met Mia Wasikowska, I could tell, oh yeah, there's a connection between Mia, Vicky and Mia. Like it's somehow strange how we share the same kind of, don't know what it is. Like, is it a melancholy maybe, or is it like some kind of longing or like in German we say Sehnsucht, you know, like a feeling you have to something you might want to have one day or you, you mm. think you lost one day or like a lost lover or like a story but you carry in yourself or something so we share this I think um, but I never knew what they actually did and then when Mia showed me the movie the first time was in lockdown and I went to Paris you know and she showed it to me in an empty cinema like only I was sitting there alone and I couldn't believe it. I was like wow that's the movie <laughs> I've never seen it, you know? It was, it was yeah. Like, and I remember crying so much. I was crying for the, the last 30 minutes and I could not understand why I'm crying. But then later I understood because, yes, it's talking of like these really deep longings and, and you know, pain we carry with us or like memories or things we, we knew one day or, you know. Uh, it was very... It was a very nice experience. I really, I love what she did with the movie. In the movie. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. And I, I love, I, I love that you say that you, the three of you share some of this quality. Cause yeah. I think that's really true um, of, of all of you as, as actors. Um, and yeah, it's like a, there's just a, a, a sense of a DNA strand that is existing throughout all of them. And then I do love at the end when you get to interact with Anders as Anders and Mia yeah. as Mia very briefly. It's like, it's sort it just, it sort of folds everything in on itself, but also makes it bigger in a way that's really um, yeah. fascinating. Yeah, because she switches realities. And, and to me, like the movies is talking about how we have to let go of our perception of reality to mm -hmm. find us. She's finding her story as a movie maker, but we, each of us, we need to find our story. What am I doing in this life? You know, where do I want to go? Who do I want to be? And sometimes the only thing you can do in order to find it is let go of your idea of who you think you should be or the life mm -hmm. you should li live, you know, which is like a construct we carry with ourselves, like a perception of reality. But it's just a perception. It's not actually real. Mm -hmm. What is real is what's happening now. I'm talking to you on a weird piece of uh, material, you know, technological, whatever, you know, sitting in a hotel room in the country, I'm not living in, you know, jet lag, whatever. That's real. But I could also be here thinking about, oh, where I need to go later and how do I look and what is, and we do that all the time. Like we're all, all the time, we're like thinking of ourselves as something we think we should be. You know, mm -hmm. this is should be, the reality I should have. And, and Chris, of course, has the same thing, you know, I should be this director and it should feel good writing, you know, and I should, and she has to embrace her weakness and she has to embrace her fear and embrace the fact that she doesn't know in order to find, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. And I think same for every actor, you know, if you want to find a, a character, or if you know how to, to play something, you have to let go of your idea how it should be, you know, mm -hmm. you just, go with it and, and, and let it happen and, and, and find it, you know, when it's there. Right. Um, I did want to ask, I wanted to go back to before uh, Bergman Island and, and ask a little bit about Phantom Thread. And that was this huge breakout role for you, especially in America. And, and um, it's a film that I love very much, but I'm curious what after that the success of that film did you feel pressure about the next choices you had to make or what were you what was your mindset in thinking about okay who am i going to work with or what what am i going to do now i mean was there or was it just i'm just going to work with the people that i want to work with you know it's just it's such a yeah. huge role and such a character that people associate with you alma um yeah. what was that like for you I think part of the answer could be 
technically answered by everyone because the movie is so powerful and strange at the same time. If you have been part of that movie, it, it lives with you for a while. It's not a movie you can just step out of, you know, out of a video game, like next video game, you know? Right. You can't because this movie, um, it was not easy to make, make and especially for me because I, I came out of nowhere, you know, and I really didn't know what was going on. And I just did what I know how to do is like follow my intuition and I, I tried to be intuitive and just, you know, answer to what was going on and, and follow and do day after day after day. And then the movie was over and I was out in the world, you know, like completely lost because that had been my world, you know, for a time. And the way that, that Paul shoots a movie, it feels like a real thing. It's like a hologram. It's like a, it's a trip, you know, but a trip that goes like for months. So there I was back, you know, being a mother with my two children. I didn't know how that would work. <laughs> it was like, huh? <laughs> and then I tried to get that back on track. And I did. That was most of what I did after the movie. Then we had the press tour, which was as scary again, because again, it was something I'd never done before. And again, I was being put into this place, which I felt a stranger to, you know, almost like an alien. And I could tell that what I was doing was not what was expected, or maybe I didn't feel like it was fitting in or anyway. So it was again, quite strange. And then only started at the time that I could let go of the movie, mm -hmm. but it was a movie. I really had to almost exercise. Right. You see, I needed to really. So my thinking then not knowing what's right and what's wrong was I should really take time for myself. Like I need to think this is too much. This is too crazy. I cannot now take another role and, and just be like the next thing here or like to go on and be like dancing and singing or like it, it would have felt wrong. It would have been like, Oh, look at me. I'm this actress, you know, look at what I can do. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that would be right to my art, you know? So I went back into more like a zone of meditating about what is my job? What is acting? What is my life? And so I thought it would be, easier and better to do movies in French or uh, in German or things that were like closer to me. Um, yeah. So that's really what I did. I think I became quiet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you don't want to take on a role that's Alma 2, 2.0 or like yeah. be sort of pigeonholed into that. And I, d I don't think you have done that. I have to say, I love old and I love that you did old and worked with M. Night Shyamalan. That <laughs> yeah, was such I, a fun movie. <laughs> it's because I like challenges, you know? Right. And, and when that came around the corner, I was like, okay, now that's something else. I was like, okay, wow. I've <laughs> never done anything like it, you know? I've never done this kind of cinema. I remember really, really liking his movies before, especially I saw Split and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. So that was, of course, interesting. But then the idea of these people stuck on the beach, you know, in lockdown. I mean, we were shooting it on lockdown. In oh, lockdown. wow. So it was like being stuck on this beach for real, you know. <laughs> I think we all feel in lockdown like we're on the old beach. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like we, we don't know what time is. Yes. We're all getting older, but it seems like everything's <laughs> staying the same. Yeah. And you don't realize you're getting older until, until you're like old. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, I know. I, I agree. And, and also how strange the movie shows like these archetypes of people. Right. And I feel that the, the lockdown did the same. I mean, I feel like I know my neighbors now. Like now they have shown me their real face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, often more ugly than I would like to think. But you know what I mean? Like how it, it pulled out each of us like almost like the essence of who we are, but not always for the nicest part, you know, but it, it was such a crazy experience. I think everyone just, yeah, you could, you could see these archetypes after yeah. walking around the street, you know?
the pandemic to me has like revealed everything. Like it's revealed things about people's character. It's revealed things yeah. about people's relationships. And it is kind of interesting how, how old also does that where it's like, yeah. you kind of become the thing that you like the archetypes that you're saying, and, yes. but it reveals every aspect of that. Totally. And how, and how empty it is. I think that's what, what, the, what the pandemic did in the good sense is that you realize where are we running to? Right. Like, for a time we were not running, right? But as soon as it, it came back on, we were running again. Like just the other day I was on an airport and I was like, where are these people running to? And my son who was walking next to me, he looks at me, he's like, mom, I think they're running to the uh, Arche Noah. How do you say Arche Noah? Like the, the ship Noah built. Oh, Noah's Ark? Yes. He was okay. like, oh mom, I think they're running to Noah's Ark. Oh God. <laughs> Because he was right. That, that's the kind of behavior everyone's like running, like, right. Quick, let me get the last seat, you know, before the other one gets it. You know? And it's, it's, it's really crazy how we all run all the time. But by running, we lose all the time. Because right. we have so little time. We are here like one life, which is what? Nothing, you know? Yeah. And during that time, we spend our time like being all stressed that we don't look good, that we have, should do more sport, we should drink a calcium magnesium bomb juice uh you know we should you know what i mean like we should have more money we should buy this thing and buy and it's like oh but then it's over right why don't you just sit on the beach and enjoy the campfire and accept that yes we're getting older and we're dying so for me mia's film and old and also hold me tight they all strangely talk of this thing of like why do we have this construct of reality of who we think we are mm -hmm. and to which we are running to where the real answers are to be found outside of the construction? No, we need more fantasy. Like the movie, why is the movie nice? It's because it's a journey and it's a story about emancipating yourself out of your own construct. And how do you find yourself when you go and you open the door and you say, okay, now I go and I'm, accepting the fact that I'm weak and maybe I'm someone who has not the way of writing a script like my husband. Maybe I'm not someone with this like perfect idea of who I am, but I'm still going to find my way. Mm -hmm. And it's not perfect, but it will be my way. Yeah. Well, I think that's a perfect sentiment to end this conversation, <laughs> which has been so fascinating and interesting. And I could just talk to you about it for I could talk to you about this forever. So thank you so much. Thank you. And um, on behalf of the SAG After Foundation, I want to thank you for sharing your experiences, the process, and your craft with your fellow performers. Thank you.